This is the Kraft Pure Trail, and it's different than any other shoe Kraft has made. So forget everything you think you know about Kraft shoes. It's time to lace up the Pure Trail and take it for a run. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kobuzi and I am a non-elite runner who views running shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the Kraft Pure Trail. But before I do, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Kraft sent to me for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for these shoes. However, Kraft isn't paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Kraft. Pure Trail. First, let's go over some specs on the shoe. For me, the big story is that they're using a super critical foam in this shoe. It's their CR foam, and there's 36 millimeters of stack height of this foam with a six millimeter drop giving us 30 millimeters of nothing but that CR foam in this midsole. And that's a really good thing because I don't know what they've done differently to this shoe that has CR foam to some of the other shoes in the lineup that have that same CR foam because this is a really nice and squishy midsole foam material that's in here. I'm not sure exactly what the source material is in this nitro foam, but I believe it is a super critical TPU. That's kind of what I'm thinking it is. It reminds me so much of the fuel cell foam that we see over from New Balance. And I mean that in all the best kind of ways. It's a shoe that's really absorbing a lot of impact well, but is also giving me back a lot of responsive spring. So that way I can still pick up the pace in this shoe when I need to. Even though Crafts considers this to be one of their racing shoes, there isn't a carbon fiber plate in this shoe, but there is a rock plate that's kind of connected to the contact lugged rubber outsole that's on the bottom of the shoe. And the lugs that we do have here are a bit beefier than we've seen in some of the other Kraft trail running shoes. So this is going to be really suitable for a wider variety of trails. Up top, mesh TPU upper here that is very lightweight, nice and floppy. There's a little bit of padding around the heel cup to keep things comfortable, but nothing that's too plush or too squishy here. Everything fits really well and you can really crank down on the laces to get nice and snug. The tongue is also really nice and thin, which is something that I like to see when we're talking about shoes that I'm intended to be running a little bit faster in. In terms of fit, I went true to size on this one and I feel like that's a really nice way to go. Kraft said this is one of their regular fit shoes, which means it's a little bit more snug in the midfoot and in the heel cup with a little bit more room in the toe box, which is gonna be nice for those longer days out there on the trail. But I also found that it wasn't so roomy that on some more aggressive downhills, I didn't feel like my toes were slamming around inside the shoe. So I felt like the fit was really nice for a wide variety of terrains and tempos. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a slightly heavy weight. 320 grams translates to about 11.2 ounces, although the shoe is heavier than it looks like it should be overall. It still feels like a shoe that carries the weight well, and it doesn't feel to me like a heavy shoe once you get it on foot. All right, now that we've talked about all those paper specs, let's talk about what it was like to actually run in this shoe. And this is definitely my favorite shoe that Kraft has ever made. Finally, they're getting something that's a little bit more soft and cushioned, and it's also still a responsive shoe, so we're not getting anything that's too muddled or mushy. A lot of other shoes previously in the Kraft lineup have been really fun, but firm. For example, like the Kraft CTM Ultra Carbon 2 is a really great racing shoe for some of those faster trails, but I just feel like overall the ride is really harsh. The foam is not nearly as forgiving as I'd like to see for a shoe that has this much stack height in it. And even when compared to another CR foam shoe, the Kraft Nordlight Ultra, I feel like this shoe is a little bit more on the firmer side. And it's one of those kind of peculiar example where the exact same foam used in two different shoes with different stack heights and different geometries can result in very different rides. Now, the 
testing that I did for this shoe was kind of in two main areas. Over the summer, I had the chance to go out to France and watch the races at UTMB. And in some of our downtime, I even was able to get up into some of those Chamonix mountains. And I felt like the Pure Trail was one of the best shoes that I could have imagined bringing for terrain that I encountered and the kind of paces that we were trying to go for that day. It was just an easy run through the trail with some friends where sometimes you're pushing it because the trail just kind of begs you to do it and the scenery is so lovely that you really want to just run. And then when I got back home to the United States, even though I'm in the Midwest, the park that I do most of my trail shoe testing in happened to host a race that featured over 2,000 feet of elevation gain over the course of 11 miles. And even on that kind of terrain, I felt like the shoe did really well when I was trying to go faster. I was able to pick up the pace without any sort of problem at all. And I felt like the shoe was very willing to be able to hold some of those faster paces. But then when I had to slow down and either climb up or down some of those steep ridges, I was able to do that really well without worrying about either the traction of the shoe or without the shoe becoming uncomfortable. So I felt like it was fun for both a two hour faster pace adventure in my local trails, but also for a much longer all day adventure in the French Alps. So I'm really liking what they've done with the foam in the Craft Pure Trail. They made it softer and more responsive in a shoe that's much easier for me to be able to enjoy on a variety of types of terrain and a variety of types of paces. And I really hope that they're gonna take some of the learnings from this shoe and start spreading it out to some of the other models of the Craft lineup. And now I'm not saying they should completely abandon some of the more responsive, firmer foams that are in the lineup, but I don't think all the shoes need to have that firmer, more responsive feeling to them. I hope that the presence of this type of experience in the Pure Trail bodes well for expansion of that experience to other shoes in the Craft lineup. So now let's talk about some shoes that you can pair the Pure Trail with if you wanna start building a shoe rotation, and then we'll get to the buying guide and some competition that you may want to consider if you're looking at the Pure Trail. First, in terms of a shoe that goes well with it, I've already mentioned that the midsole foam that's in the Pure Trail really reminds me of the foam that's in the Fuel Cell series from New Balance. So I feel like if you're gonna use the Pure Trail on the trails, I feel like a really great road option for you is gonna be the New Balance SC Trainer version two. It's kind of a double stack of fuel cell foam with a carbon fiber plate placed in the middle between those two layers, but it's not a super aggressive shoe. It's really great for longer runs. And even though they're not within the same brand, I feel like they're really nice road and trail siblings. Now, in terms of competition and the buying guide, the Pure Trail comes in at $170, which I feel like is a fantastic price for what you're getting in this shoe. At a year where every shoe is just a little bit more expensive than I would prefer it to be, I feel like this 170 price for the Pure Trail is excellent. And I think that the shoe that comes to mind most when I'm talking about competition head to head with the Pure Trail is going to be the Hoka Tecton X. Now they're on Tecton X version two for this year. I didn't try that one, but it did run in the original version, version one last year. And I feel like that Profly midsole that they've got going on in that shoe provides a squishy yet responsive experience that definitely reminds me of what the Pure Trail has to offer. And I feel like both of those shoes are trying to fit in similar categories where they can be used for more aggressive racing, but then they also can be used for easier all day running kinds of scenarios. So I feel like those are two shoes that should be looked at at the same time. The Tecton X, at least version two, comes in at $225. There are kind of dual carbon plates or carbon kind of like shanks in the Tecton X2 to help stabilize some of that foam. So there's a little bit of a different technology in there and it has a V-Room light base lugged outsole. So some other things that kind of bring it to that 225, but I feel like those two shoes are pretty comparable to me at the end of the day when you actually get them out on the trails. So those are my thoughts on the Craft Pure Trail. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?